Welcome to Salcedo Paranormal. It is Tuesday, May 3rd, 2022. And today I'll be sharing true paranormal stories from the web. As always, you can find all the episodes, links to social media, ways to donate, and other ways to contact me at the podcast page, which is Salcedo Paranormal at podbean.com. That's S A L S I D O paranormal dot podbean dot com. Always happy to hear from you all. Whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions for shows, or if you have stories of experiences, whether they're your own or from others that you trust, always happy to either read those on the show or have you join me on the show. Whatever works for you. Um, and uh, I believe that covers that. So um, thank you all for listening. Whether you're here for the live stream, I see everyone there. Thank you for being here. Or whether you listen to the podcast or YouTube feeds. Um, so with that, I think I can get to the stories. Here. Let me open that and then we will start. So, this first story says, this happened when I was turning 12. My family and I transferred to a house, which I could say was creepy. Our neighbor said that the former person who lived in that same apartment died there, in the room which my brother and I were sleeping. There were some nights which I could hear our utensils in the kitchen making a sound, and I told my mother about, about it, and she said that she could hear it too, and that it was probably uh, because of cockroaches. So this is when the creepy thing happened. I was awoken in the middle of the night and wanted to go use the bathroom. But when I faced the bedroom door, I saw a woman wearing a white gown. You could say I was lying since it sounds like a white lady from movies, but I swear it isn't. I can only see the woman's back, and my parents are sleeping in the living room. Therefore, she was looking at my parents. But I only realized these things in the morning, since that was the time when everything sunk in. I immediately tried to go to sleep by covering my face with a pillow. The next morning, I asked my parents if they went to the bathroom in the middle of the night since I was suspecting that it's just my, my mother, even though it really didn't look like her. I said to my parents what I saw, told my parents what I saw, and my mother said that our house was really creepy, and she believed me. We transferred to another house, but our creepy apartment was just 100 meters away from our new home. Um, and that is it for that one. Um, sounds like a apparition of some kind. I find it interesting that there was no movement as far as the writer could see at the time. Of course, if they just saw whatever this was for a brief moment, then maybe there was more movement um, than they saw. Could be if it was someone sentient that was there, they were just wondering who was there and why they were there. Um, hard to say. But uh, makes me wonder, sounds like, it almost sounds like maybe that the homes, I don't know, it sounds like it was some kind of program or something. Whether it was military or, I don't know. But, um, if people were being moved in and out of there a lot, that could maybe also lead to some activity. Um, so anyway, that's that story. And, uh, I will move on to the next one. Let's see. Okay. 
This one says, I am a 23-year-old male. I'm currently a night shift worker and live alone in a flat in a city center. Over the past couple of weeks, strange things have started happening in the flat, and I'm not sure how to explain it. It all started with random items moving from where I had put them, such as keys and headphones. However, I put this down to being overly tired and just forgetting I'd move things. Then one night last week, when I came back from work, the phone, which connects my flat to the intercom on the outside of the building, was hanging off of the wall in my hallway. I tried to put this down to me brushing past it and knocking it off on my way to work or something. That would logically make sense. That was all up until a couple of days ago. When I returned from work at 6 a.m. and thought that I'd been robbed. Multiple lights in the flat were on in random rooms. Doors were wide open, which always stay shut, including storage cupboards, which haven't been open since I moved in a year ago. The whole flat was a mess. Loose paper all over the floor of the living room. Random power outlets, I'm guessing they say plugs on. Clothes off of, the hang off of hangers. Glasses and personal items on their side or on the floor. It's hard to explain how bad it was. But my first thought was that someone had broken in. That was until I found that nothing had been taken. Including expensive items. Such as guitars, a laptop, a game console, and similar things. That were completely on show. I went further and investigated if someone else had keys for my flat, but I am the only one with keys apart from the estate agent. This isn't my first, uh, the first paranormal thing I've experienced, but this has definitely shocked and confused the heck out of me. And that's where that one ends. Um... I don't know, sounds like there's some kind of something, some ener either energy, whether it's just moving through the place, or some, some conscious being that's just, sounds like just making a mess. Um, almost sounds like a poltergeist, except usually those are, at least it seems like, if I'm rem remembering right, those are witnessed by people at the time that these things are moving around. <clears throat> Maybe not, but um, so yeah, obviously, I don't know what to make of that one. Hopefully, things calm down for the writer over or wherever they were. So, um, let me get on to the next story here. So, maybe a quick episode today, but. I did get the usual amount of stories, so uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, this one says, I was just thinking about a very haunted area near where I grew up. I'm often homesick for the mountains and was reminiscing about one of the strangest things I've ever seen. When the old mining cemetery was open and you could drive up, we went there annually at night on Halloween. There's a lot of lore, people seeing full-bodied apparitions and handprints appearing on the windshield if you drive up on a particular foggy night. We took our annual trip up. This was about 2006. I remember it clear as day. My dad's friend was running around with his cigarette, shaking branches to try and scare us. I was tough as nails and he wasn't going to frighten me as the rest of the kids ran back to the car. I was standing there looking around at the old headstones 
and taking in the chilly night air. It was perfectly calm, and he walked up behind me, still smoking and carrying on about how he could tell I was my father's daughter. As we were chatting, a white pickup pulled up next to, the, to our truck with the cab light on. The cemetery is on a hill, and we were only about 100 feet up the hill, so I could see clearly into the cab. I couldn't see a driver. I said to my dad's friend, Hey, who's driving that? He said, I don't see anyone in the cab. My dad's friend looked extremely confused. I yelled down to my friend, who was outside the back of the truck to look in the window. How the heck did they pull in? I could see in the cab the entire time because of the light. She looked in, turned completely pale, and jumped in our truck. Both my dad's friend and I ran down the hill, and the truck slowly backed out and went back down the path. Cab lights still on. No one visible driving. I jumped in our truck, and my friend was yelling, There's no one in there. Either this was the most elaborate prank ever pulled off, and someone has hit it for 10 plus years, or I saw a ghost truck. In our area, area news travels fast though, and I'm sure if someone had rigged a self-driving pickup, it would have been news for days. And that's the end of that story. Um, I don't know what to make of that. That makes me wonder where did the that, uh, truck go? I'm guessing they left soon after that happened. If they didn't see the truck, then maybe it really was some kind of a... I don't know if it was a ghost truck or if it was just an escape through some kind of a... If it was some kind of a time anomaly that made it disappear. Um, a lot of questions there. So, again, that um, reminds me of a story from family from way back when. At least now, anyway, it's way back when. My, um, my grandma's sister, her house was really, really active. And at one point, there was uh, their car basically... They woke up one morning and uh, found their car was missing and they got a call from one of their neighbors a little, little ways away saying they had witnessed the car pull up along the street in front of their house. But they didn't see anyone in it when it, when it drove up there. So this was a regular, the car was regular. The car was real. It was the family car. I don't know. Which is stranger in a way, if if, if um, this truck was also part of some kind of a, if it was made of energy or some kind of a apparition, or if it was a solid vehicle, then where did it go? Um, just a lot of questions there. So, and the fact that the light was on in the cab, that almost seems like was on just, just to show people that it didn't look like there was anyone driving the truck. Um, so, I don't know. As time goes on, those kind of stories to me get a little bit more a little bit harder to really get into because of the advancement of technology as it is now. And I kind of just thought of, that, thought of that. But still, if they didn't see any cameras Anything like that, where that could be, it could be um, controlled and and driven. I don't know. That's a hard one to really judge a lot. And then if it disappeared, if the because the writer didn't say they saw it um, anywhere after that, that pulled back down the hill. And if it also reversed down the hill and it was down a hill. Um, Seems like that could be difficult as well. So, yeah, I don't know what to make of that one. But, um, so I guess I'll go on to the next story here. 
Um, all right. So this one, uh, it's kind of funny today. I was looking through stories and I found three that were fall into more of the ghost category in a way, and then three that are more in the UFO category. Um, although a couple of them are still kind of hard to classify. But so anyway, here's here's this next one. This says, I saw something incredible when our family was staying at a place in or Oregon in August of 2017 to view the solar eclipse that same week. We were soaking in the springs late at night and a family member excitedly pointed up at the sky and said, is that a UFO up there? What is that thing? This little flame orange colored ball of light way up at what must have been a uh, satellite altitude was zigzagging around at high speeds, making figure eights and abruptly stopping before zipping off at mind bogglingly high speed, like those quick meteorites toward the west. It sort of reminded me of the Star Wars Millennium Falcon when it takes off at light speed. The next day it was the talk of the entire campground. Some kids were complaining that they weren't able to see it because they were in the cabins busy playing on their smartphones when it happened. A friendly young couple from Europe also staying at the campground was able to get some of it on film and sent, sent it to me. I have to dig it out. Until that night, I never seriously entertained the thought that UFOs or paranormal could actually be real. I and everyone else that was outside that night will never forget what we saw. So there's a sighting of uh, something with uh, multiple people that saw it, which is, those are always um, neat cases to me. So, but, uh, so yeah, it seems like there was people there that didn't know each other that all saw the same kind of similar thing there. So, and again, these, these orbs or these lights that uh, appear everywhere. Hopefully you all never get tired of these kind of stories because I don't, so um, you probably hear a lot more of them as long as you listen to the podcast. But, uh, so we'll go on to the next story here. This one says, I just wanted to share this quick with you all. And I'm not lying. I just saw two white dots in the sky following each other, moving way faster than satellites. They were going in a straight-ish line and weaving close and far from each other. They flew most of my vision of the night sky in a, about 10 seconds and were far up. I'm pretty baffled right now and I wanted to share. Minutes earlier, I was looking at the sky, asking for answers. Incredible. And that's the end of that one. What's odd about that in a way is that the person, the writer, was basically, I guess you could maybe say soul-searching or praying or asking for some kind of a sign from the universe, sounds like almost consciousness angle of all of this again. Do some of these things show up? Are they attracted by thoughts from people? Um, do they sense them? Are they able to, to uh, respond in some cases? I think you do hear about that sometimes. Um, so, hard to say. But um, I've heard similar stories like that before, so that is not uh, 
not quite a one-off there. That's just um. So that thought that was a neat one there. But uh, got one more story here. Like I said, I knew this wasn't gonna be too long of a episode today, but that's okay. Um, so this one says, I just had a surreal experience. I was driving from one place to another in Utah and saw an orange glowing orb hovering about 100 feet above the NSA building, uh, one of their data centers. I watched it from the freeway in awe and it slowly rose up and then turned into a smaller white dot and then started rising a little faster. And then it blinked out like a light bulb being turned off and was gone. I couldn't film from the freeway and it was gone before I got a chance anyway. I immediately called my wife and told her after it happened. Uh, and then it asks basically for other witnesses. Um, it honestly looked like a mini sun for lack of a better description. I'd imagine someone else had to have seen it as well. Still a little shaken up, but wanted to tell everyone. So, um, that's, uh, another thing that happens sometimes is these lights, they change size and or, uh, shape and or color. So, um, that one is, that one is, uh, a neat one in a way, just because of kind of like where it was at in general near a government building whether whether that means anything or not um but uh and then just the way it i wonder when it blinked out is it because it just did blink out did disappear or just shot up or away so fast that it just was just gone because i've heard similar descriptions of how they seem to be gone sometimes and some people say it's they're they left somewhere and others that just blinks out but if it goes fast enough how would you i don't know seems like you might not be able to tell the difference in some cases so um that uh, takes care of all the stories for today i probably have gotten a couple more but um thank you all for listening uh tomorrow will be another book review and uh then Thursday will be more more of these true stories, the true paranormal stories from the web. So, and then Friday, I've decided I'll be finishing the uh, series on uh, festivals and fairs and amusement parks and the paranormal. So, that's the plans for the rest of the week. Uh, thank you all for being here, as always. Um, and I will talk to you all tomorrow night on the next episode of Salcedo Paranormal. Take care.